you. We all so look forward to these visits. <laughs> I'll come about me money. What else? <laughs> oh, yes. We wrote to you. I wouldn't be here if you didn't, would I? Just refreshing my memory. I'll do with a bit of refreshment. It's a bloody long walk up here in this heat, I tell you. Well, with a bit of luck, this shouldn't take too long and you can be away before the pub's shut. I can stay shut for all the good I get out of and the money you give me. <laughs> You're querying the £5 extra the government allowed for heat last winter. That's correct. But you've received that £5. Not what I'm entitled to, eh? Yes, you have. No, let me explain. There is no explaining to do. Yes, there is. I've checked. You've received the £5. Not the £5 I am talking about. What £5 are you talking about? <laughs> the extra that I think I am entitled to for living on the end of a terrace. <laughs> If you live in the middle of a terrace, you are warmer than those who live on the end of it, right? I'm not quite with you. People who live in the middle of a terrace are warmer because they can gain up to 1.5 centigrades of heat from the neighbours who live on either side of them. Plus another 1.5 centigrades or more from the neighbours who live beneath them. <laughs> I mean, don't have to be Einstein to work that one out, do you? <laughs> if you live upstairs, you are warmer than the people who live downstairs. Because heat rises and spreads itself out. So, those who live downstairs on the end of a terrace should be given more severe weather allowance than the others. <laughs> but it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, so it follows that... The more fuel the downstairs burns, the more benefit in additional heat upstairs receives and next door. So, it's not unreasonable to ask that upstairs and next door should contribute to the cost of the extra heat both are benefiting from the unlucky sod who lives downstairs. You <laughs> must have burned all that extra fuel just to keep yourself warm. And that's you. That is me, right, and it ain't fair. Well, hmm. Do you have a point, of course? Point, point. But I'm not sure what view the authorities will take of it. Fuck the authorities. <laughs> I'll make a note. And... No, 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 no. File it away from you. Have you tried lagging? Lagging? How do you think I'm going to lag? I mean, how do you expect her upstairs to let me lay lots of lagging for all over her floor, eh? And another thing. This, this pamphlet of yours. Warmth in winter. Perfect. How to keep warm in winter? Hot water bottles. <laughs> and who's going to pay for the gas to hot the water that they put in them bottles? Eh? I'll see that. <laughs> what, what about this? What about this? Keep a well stocked store cupboard. <laughs> we ain't all poor gays, you know. <laughs> yeah, look, look, have plenty of hot, hot meals and hot drinks. Hot this, hot that. It's all hot, isn't it? Hot, hot. <laughs> Hot costs money, my dear. Hot is expensive, hot is. <laughs> Who writes this bloody rubbish, eh? <laughs> Got a medical council on now about... on about overeating, the dangers of overeating. And for your information, that is overeating without an H. <laughs> <laughs> More, eh? Look, health warnings. Health warnings on smoking and drink abuse. The dangers, dangers of... Drinking and driving, oh dear. <laughs> this is, and stick to a sensible, balanced diet with plenty of fresh fruit, vegetables and fibres to avoid heart attacks. I mean, how can I afford to stick to a diet like that an old age pension, eh? Where do they think I'm going to get the money from the bowl of fresh fruit and veggies and everything they want me to eat? Hey, will you tell them to stop worrying, my dear, because I can't afford to eat or do anything that's dangerous to my health. I can't afford to get up in the morning, I can't. <laughs> I can't afford to smoke or drink properly. I ain't got a car, so I can't afford to drive sober, let alone drive. <laughs> I'll probably live forever, I will, because I can't afford to do anything that's bad for me. <laughs> what are they saving us? What the bloody hell are they saving us? But they don't want us, do they? I mean, you, you live you live to draw your old age pigs, and then you lot try and starve us or freeze us to death. <laughs> I'll tell you something, the punishment for living too long is to become an old age pensioner. It'll happen to you, and don't you worry. You see, your turn will come. <laughs> You're well on the way now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no offence, but I'm just speaking in mind, that's all. Look, you want to help me? 
You've got any Christian feeling left in you? Well, some of you do. I admit that. You're not all as hard-faced as you look. You want to <laughs> you wanna help me? Let me do a bit of wheelchair pushing. Wheelchair pushing? Yeah, I've done the knowledge. <laughs> You know that. I've pushed my wife around, God rest her soul, for years. You know that. I know this area like the back of my hand. I can push them anywhere, anywhere they want to go. West Ham, up the pub, anywhere. Are you, are you volunteering for social activity? I'm not volunteering for nothing, missus. I was in the army. One thing you learn is you don't volunteer unless you're ordered. No, I am talking about earning a few bob. You want paying? Well, blimey, you get paid for doing this, don't you? <laughs> no, you, you get paid. You're too old, Mr. Oh, Garnet, to be employed oh, yeah. at social work. Thank you, work. thank you. That is charming, that is. I mean, you can see how your bureaucratic mind works, don't you? I'm too, I'm too old to get paid for it, but I'm not too old to do it for nothing, am I? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Garnet. All right, well, on your own head be it, Mrs. Well, I'll tell you something, it'll be a bloody sight cheaper for you to keep me alive this winter than bury me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no money. And you'll have to provide a trap to put me under the ground. I've paid for my last funeral when I had the wife put down. Now, I don't give a monkeys. You want me under the ground? You pay for the bloody hole. <laughs> I'll tell you, sonny, if I go this winter, I'm going to buy a bloody great stamp, stick it on my forehead and get myself delivered here. <laughs>